What's up everyone? It's Rayvon from Love Lola. Welcome to my channel. Thank you so much for joining me today. I am just so happy to have you here with me. Make sure that you take a moment to look down below in the description box because that's where you're going to find a link to where you can purchase the pattern. I'm going to have links to where I purchase my materials, my vinyls, my zippers, my hardware. If I'm using it, you're going to have a link to where you can find it. Today, we're going to be making Alrighty, let's get started. I've got all of my pieces cut out. I have interfaced everything with Sofuse Plus. For my bottom, I did use a piece of Pellon Peltex 70 and I put that underneath my Sofuse Plus for a little bit more stability on the bottom. There's some markings that you can go ahead and make that I've done. You can make a mark if you're gonna be using purse feet. You can also go ahead and mark where your piping is going to start if you're going to be doing piping. You can mark where your lock is going to be placed on your main panel and also Just for reference, one of these flat pieces is slightly longer than the other. Just in case you're doing something with your pad with your fabric, the piece that is longer is going to be the piece that's actually going to show once the flap is added to the bag, okay? All right, let's go ahead and get started. As usual with her flaps, you do have the option to leave your edges exposed or to sew it together. I choose to sew it together because I'm too lazy to um, edge coat, edge paint. And I don't like the look of a raw exposed edge, edge if it isn't uh, painted. So we're gonna go ahead and place these right sides touching. Okay, let's go and sew this together at 1 fourth of an inch seam allowance. Okay, we've got that done. I'm gonna trim down my seam allowance just a tad bit especially around those curves where it likes to bulk up. All right, I'm gonna turn it out. Gently press out your seams a little bit. I'm gonna roll mine. I got this little roller off of Amazon. Down below for every video, I'll always put the link to all of the tools that I use. If you're interested, it's there. Okay. Now I am going to go and do a top stitch around the edge at 1 8 of an inch seam allowance. Okay, so we've got it top stitched. I do have a little piece of stabilizer that I cut out. This is Pellon Peltex 70. Then I'm gonna go ahead and slide in because I wanted just a little bit more stability on this flap. I don't like when my flaps are flimsy. Ugh. I don't know why that really bothers me. Okay, so I slid that in. And that now I have gone ahead and placed a little piece of double-sided tape along that little bit of material that's sticking out a little bit. I'm gonna take that off and then I'm just gonna fold that over the back. Okay, so next you're going to use the mark from your flat panel A. You're gonna get your um, the female part of your lock installed. I'm gonna be using this bamboo lock because I just, I love it so much. It's available on my website if you like it. So I'm gonna go ahead and get this installed and then I'll be back with you in just a second. 
At this point, I have gotten the male and the female part of my locks installed. Looking good, looking good. Now we're gonna move on. Let's grab our back panel piece. And we're gonna grab our exterior main panel and I'm just gonna fold it right on those dotted lines. All right, I'm gonna line it up on the pattern. I'm gonna replace that and then I'm also, once I do that, I'm going to put tape on the outer tip so that I can attach it to this. And we're just gonna line it up. I made a mark so I can see where it begins and it ends. And I'm just gonna line my flap up with that mark. And our flap is now right side facing up and our exterior piece is also right side facing up. I've got my flap on. Now I'm gonna head over to the machine and I'm gonna top stitch at 1 8 of an inch from this top stitch to the other. I'm not going to back stitch. I'm gonna leave my string, my thread long and pull it through to the back and tie it. Once you've got that attached, now you're going to go and you're going to go up 1 4 of an inch from that first stitch. So that stitch is there, go up 1 4 of an inch and add a second top stitch, okay? Once you do that, go ahead and grab some rivets and place a rivet in each corner just to help secure it a little bit more. I think I'm going to be adding a piece of webbing, the same webbing that um, I'm going to be using as my handle because I think that'd be kind of dope. Yeah. But yeah, get that second top stitch and rivet it and you're good to go. Okay, so I have got my flap attached. Everything's good. Let's work on our gusset. Now she tells you that you can use this pattern piece to trace those dots onto here for the next step. I'm not gonna do that. I'm just going to, um, those dots are at a 1 4th of an inch seam allowance. So I'm just gonna know that I need to sew it at 1 4th of an inch seam allowance. So we wanna take these darts and place them right sides touching. and get them pinned. And we're gonna do that to all four of those darts. Okay, and now we're gonna go and sew this at one fourth of an inch seam allowance. I will say that she says, do not back stitch at the corners, leave your string long and pull it through and tie it. I'm probably gonna back stitch, I'm just lazy. Okay, so we have got our darts put on. Put on. We're gonna push that to the side. Grab one of our um, panel pieces, the front, the back, it doesn't matter which one. And we're going to get our bottom attached. So our panel is right side facing up and our bottom is also gonna be right side, right side facing up. You could have by now added your label piece if you are going to be adding like a bag label. I haven't added mine yet because she said to put it on the back and I'm considering putting mine on the front, but I wanna see how it looks with everything put together. I just don't know yet. <laughs> so with that being said, let's get uh, our bottom put on. Our panel piece is right side facing up and our bottom piece is right side facing down. Match up those midpoints, pin it, and then we're gonna go and get them sewn together at 3 8 of an inch seam allowance. Okay, so now we're gonna take it, fold it down, and we want our seam allowance to be going towards the bottom of the bag. There we go, so seam allowance is going towards the bottom. And now we are going to go and top stitch on the bottom of the bag at 1 8 of an inch seam allowance. Okay, once we've got that on and top stitch, we're gonna repeat the same thing to the other side. So I've got my other panel right side facing up. My bottom piece is going to be right side facing down. I'm gonna match up those midpoints, get it attached, and then go and sew it at 3 8 of an inch seam allowance. And while I'm over there, I'm going to go ahead and flip it over and do that top stitch just like we just did, okay? 
so that we'll be ready for the next step. Okay, so now I can see what we got going on with the bag. That's that's nice. I love it. I love it already. That's nice. Okay, so I think I will go ahead and actually add my logo to the front. I think that looks pretty dope. Yeah. Yeah, I'm going to get that added to the front. I like that. I'm going to measure down about... Okay, so let's go ahead and get our gusset added. My main panel piece is right side facing up. And I'm going to find the midpoint of that bottom piece and also the midpoint of this gusset and place them so that they are right sides touching and pin it. Now I'm going to match up the top corner pieces and pin it. Okay, and now we're just going to evenly distribute this along the entire perimeter and she said to take your seam allowance from the gusset and push it out that way you won't get too bunched up right there because the seam allowance is going down on the bottom, right? And now I'm just going to pin all the way around. Now, if you aren't a fan of curves, you can staple before you go and sew it. I'm not a fan of stapling, but I tried it last time and it actually works fantastic. I think I might staple just my corner because the piping that I use today, I don't know why I use this piping. I'm honestly regretting it 100%. I don't even know where the piping came from. I think it's in my stash from back when I used to make a lot of pillows. Um, I had a few pillows that I made that were really large that I used a really thick piping on. And I think that that's what I grabbed. And just not paying attention, I, I kept it on. And by the time I realized what I had done, I had already sewn my piping together and I was too lazy to take it out and do it again. So I left it, but I feel like this is going to be a big regret for me. So I'm just going to do my best and I hope that, um, my gosh, I just hope that it works out. So I will be adding a few staples just to see if that helps me. Because I don't think you understand how thick and hard this piping is. It's like a plastic piping, so it's very, very stiff, very unforgiving. So maybe this will help. Okay, I went ahead and snipped along my curves. I don't know if I mentioned it, but you do want to sew that together at one-fourth of an inch seam allowance. All right, let's get it turned out. Oh, that's sexy. Okay, make sure you don't have any seams showing on your piping. I don't see anything. Okay, okay, okay. She cute. Alright, now I'm going to fold it over and have a look at it. See what I'm working with. Very cute. All right, now I'm gonna see if I wanna add my logo to the front. Okay, so at this point, we're pretty much finished with the exterior. What you can do is get those four seams and open them up and then stitch across 
just to have them flat, open, and ready for when we get it attached to the lining, okay? We're gonna set this to the side and start working on our lining. Super excited. Oh, I love it. That's dope. All right, let's knock this lining out. Grab one of your main panels and also that contrast band and you want them to be placed right sides touching each other. And we're gonna go and get that attached at one fourth of an inch seam allowance. Okay, now let's go ahead and press our seam allowance towards the bottom. And now we're going to go and top stitch at one eighth of an inch seam allowance on the bottom main on the main panel part, okay? All right, as you can see, I went ahead and did the same thing to the other main panel piece. Now let's get our gussets done. Okay, grab one of your gusset pieces and also one of your contrast pieces. The shorter pieces at the top, longer is at the bottom. Place them right sides together and then go and get those attached at one fourth of an inch seam allowance. Once it's attached, we're going to do just like before and we're going to fold it so that our seam allowance is going towards the bottom and then we're going to add that top stitch at one eighth of an inch along the bottom gusset piece. Okay, and just like before, we're going to take this gusset and place it right sides together on the darts. And then we're going to go and sew at one fourth, yes, one fourth of an inch seam allowance. We're going to do that to all four of these darts, okay? Okay, so we've got our darts put in. Let's get our um, lining all the way assembled now. So grab one of your main panels. It's right side facing up. You want to grab your bottom lining piece and put it right side facing down. Now, when we joined our exterior, we added these at 3 8 of an inch seam allowance. I'm going to go ahead and get my lining added at 4 8, which is going to be half of an inch, just because I really don't want um, that sagginess that happens sometimes with the lining. So I'm going to increase this bottom by one fourth of an inch seam allowance and I think that that's going to take care of that problem. So I'm going to go and sew this at half of an inch seam allowance or you can do it at three eighths of an inch in your preference. Once you've got that attached, you want to go ahead and get it so that your seam allowance is going underneath the bottom and we're going to add a top stitch of one eighth of an inch seam allowance right along this bottom panel. Once you get that done, go ahead and repeat it to the other panel. It's going to be right side facing up. You're going to place your bottom right side facing down. Give it a sew. You know the drill. Okay, once we have our bottom attached, we're going to get our gussets attached just like we did before. If you do not match your midpoints up like I didn't, go ahead and do that now. <laughs> All right, so right sides are touching, matching up the mid of the gusset to the mid of the bottom piece. Now match up your top corner. And then just match everything up along the entire thing. All 
Okay, so you see how we have those accent pieces on the inside? When you line these up, try your best to line these up together, okay? Because um, it'll show, but if it's not exactly perfect, I don't think it's going to be a big deal because it's inside of the lining. You know what I mean? Who's going to be sticking their head in there checking it out? Ain't nobody should be all up in your bag like that anyway, right? Get out of my bag, girl. All right. There we go. Yeah. All right, there we go. Okay, once you've got it pinned all the way around, we're going to go and get it attached at one-fourth of an inch seam allowance. But what we're going to do is we're going to start at one-fourth of an inch seam allowance, and then we're going to slowly start to increase it. I'm going to start increasing it probably about right here, about an inch, an inch and a half down. I'm going to increase it to half of an inch, and that's going to help with the lining not being saggy. Okay? Now, after I do this, I'm going to go ahead and get the other side attached too. Just remember on one of these sides, you need to leave a hole about six inches wide so that you can turn the bag out. All right, let's get it. We're almost done, y'all. Now, once you have these attached, just like when we did the, did the, did I can't talk. Just like when we did the exterior, you can open up all of your seam allowances. <laughs> And if you like, you can go and add a stitch right there just to hold it flat for when we get everything added together. It'll be a little bit easier, okay? If you want to trim down your seam allowance a little bit, go ahead and do it. I am. Now, the part that we um, left open, I'm not going to be trimming that down. For the final assemble, our lining should be wrong side facing out and our exterior should be right side facing out now we're going to place this right inside tuck it in as best as you can it's not going to want to fit all the way but that's okay tuck your flap in between the two and now start finding all of your midpoints and matching them up the midpoint of your lining and your exterior. Match them up and get them pinned. Once you've got your midpoints matched up, now just go around the entire thing and pin along the top. Okay, once we've got it all matched up, we're going to go and sew this at one-fourth of an inch seam allowance. All right, now let's turn this baby out. You can go ahead and put a few snips around those curves just to help it lay flat for you. All right, let's go ahead and get this baby turned out. All right, we've got it stuffed in. Go ahead and close up the hole that you use to turn it out. I'm waiting just a second because I'm not sure if I'm going to add glue or sew it closed. We'll see. But um, we're getting ready to add that final top stitch. Of course, we want our seams to be as smooth as possible. So I've got my handy dandy little tool. I found this on Amazon. And I'm gonna use this to flatten my seams. If you like this, I do have a link down below in my description box uh, of where to find this on Amazon. I think it's like seven bucks, but it really comes in handy when you need to get those seams flattened out for this final top stitch. So I'm gonna go around and do this and then I'll uh, clamp it so that nothing is gonna shift on me for my, uh, when I go top stitch. All right, once we've got this pinned all the way around, we're going to go and do a top stitch at one eighth of an inch seam allowance.
Okay, now we're gonna get our grommets attached. I am going to be using eight millimeter because that's what I have. Um, honestly, you can use eight, 12, 15, I think any of those size, sizes will suffice. As long as it's, the hole is big enough for the gate ring that you're going to be using. And I checked mine out and mine fits, so I am good to go. All right, I'm going to be using these tools that I have bought off of Amazon. If you're interested, the link is down below with everything else. Um, you should already have used the mark, have the marks on there from your pattern piece. And now I'm going to go and get these holes put in and my grommets, okay? All right, if you've never installed a grommet, don't be afraid. It's not hard. So let me show you what I did. I used this little baby to get my hole in. It seems a lot smaller than this. But I've found when, when installing grommets, it's better to make my hole slightly smaller because if not, sometimes a grommet can pull out if your hole is a little too big, you can't go back. You can always make your hole bigger, but you can't make it smaller. So I made it smaller than what it needed to be. And then I just went and did a little slit. Now I'm doing extra. You could just make your hole a little bit bigger, but I had an issue in the past and now I'm terrified. So I am just putting a little slit in the hole that I just made so that now I will be able to fit this in. So I'm pushing it through, stretching out that fabric a little bit. Okay. Once I've got it through, I'm just going to use my nails to push it down around now make the adjustment if you feel like your fabric isn't stretching enough or it's too forced then make your hole a little bit bigger but this is working for me once your grommet is through you're going to place your washer on the back just like that And then you're gonna grab your tool. I'm gonna to be using this handheld tool that I got off of Amazon because that's where I get everything. And the part that's sticking out, you see that? That part is gonna go on the underside where the washer is. And you're just gonna place that right in the middle on that groove. And then you're gonna squeeze. And there you go. Good to go. All right, I'll just do that a few more times. <laughs> okay, I went ahead and got one side attached just to make sure that it fits. And it fits, looks good. I am going to go ahead and get the other side attached. It's hard to explain. I just started at one side. It is gonna bend in the middle like that. So these two are gonna bend in the middle and touch and then the two on the outside are gonna bend. So it's gonna be like that. And I just started on one side and just kind of worked my way down. <laughs> I don't know how to explain it. Um, at one point it felt a little weird, like it wasn't gonna work, but it worked. The first three are really easy. The last one gets a little like, but it's fine. You do have to make sure that you put it in the right way though, because these two need to touch like that. 
So that means that we're going to add this to this one through the front. You know, you can add it through the front or the back. I think that's what makes the difference. So we're gonna add it through the front. See, and when you add it through the front, those two can touch. And now this last one, we need to order it. We need to add it through the back. I didn't realize the first time. The first time I just kind of did it. <laughs> there we go. Just pushing all the way through. Bam. There we go. Just kind of massage it there we go to where it needs to be perfect and this piece you know is on the side it can also rotate up to the top okay now if you're going to be making your strap the way that she did go ahead and use the measurements that she gave you to get that cut out and done and you make your strap like a traditional one you cut it you know four inches fold it into the middle twice and then sew around the entire thing. I'm going to be using a uh, some webbing because I just think that is dope. It's going to match the back of my bag. Um, so because of that, I am just going to be adding this to some swivel hooks. I do have one and a half inch swivel hooks, also two inch swivel hooks to go with all of the webbing that I carry. So I'm just going to get this added to my swivel hooks. Um, I don't think I mentioned these spring locks that I just used are available on my website. I think I'm going to put together a kit for this bag because there's so many like random stuff. So I'll put it together a kit probably that would be exactly what I used in um, on my bag. And then I also have one and a half inch strap ends because why not i i need the ends of my strap to look finished so i'm gonna go ahead and get all of these things attached and i'll be back in a second okay so the way i'm doing my strap is i cut my ends and then i am going to burn them now i'm going to fold them over And then I'm gonna go and add a top stitch right on that very edge on both ends. Okay, now I said that I was gonna bend this at um, 1 8th of an inch seam allowance, but it really was more like 2 8th of an inch seam allowance. And then I went and added a top stitch at about 1 8th of an inch seam allowance. Okay, and the reason I did that is because I needed to be a little bit thicker for this end piece to fit. Now it slots on, it's got some girth in there but it's not long enough to where that piece is showing from the bottom so it's perfect and now I'm just going to get the uh, screws put in like normal all right last thing I'm just going to get these put on my one and a half inch swivel hooks and then I'm going to go and add I'll probably add two rivets on here and then uh, we'll be good to go yay so excited you can't see it, but I am adding stabilizer in between here on the inside between this webbing because I want to make sure that it's nice and sturdy. All right, y'all, that's it. Thank you so much for joining me for this video today. And I'll also go ahead and add all of that stuff in my, um, I'll add a link to all of that stuff um, in the video description box as well. So thank you so much for joining me today and I'll see you next time. Bye.